Hey, what's up, Kankakee? Hey, this is Aaron Clark, and I am a part of the Kankakee Forgives campaign that you have been seeing out in the city. You've been seeing those signs, and as people have been seeing those signs, there's been a lot of questions about what it is. So let me just start off with this. Um, we, When we launched this back in March, the um, awareness part of it, that it was all recorded, and somehow, the video footage got destroyed. So here we are, um, a few months into it, and got a lot of questions, and um, I wanna try to address some of those questions. So I wanna answer, what is Kankakee Forgives? I wanna answer, um, how did it start? Because that's very, very important. And I wanna answer, I wanna just tell you what it's not, okay? So let's just start off with, uh, with, with what it is. Now, you know what? I'm going to start off with how it started. The way, the way Kankakee Forgive started was, um, some of you may know me as pastor. Some of y'all might know me as the City Life guy. So as the City Life guy, I, we have meetings over on the east side of Court Street with kids from 4th through 12th grade. So this particular night, it was high school night, and... Um, usually what we do is we, the kids can come in and chill out a little bit, listen to music, play games. Then we'll have, uh, something to talk about that's always meaningful. All right. So, you know, the topics range and then they get to eat and just chill. We got video games. They can shoot pool. They can watch a video. Um, just, just all kinds of cool stuff. Play Uno, play cards, whatever, checkers, chess. So that's their time to just chill, decompress from the day or maybe the week. So this particular night, um, before that chill time, we would have 15 minutes to talk about something meaningful. So this particular night, we were gonna talk about forgiveness. And it was a part of a series. Man, we said forgiveness, and one of them kids cussed so loud, it was like, ooh, <laughs> it's like, whoa. Um, so, you know, we carried on through. So this supposed to be 15 minutes. Well, 45 minutes later, we still talking. The pizza getting cold, you know, they delivered the pizza, the pizza getting cold, and it, um, we still, and it's just like, look, the food getting cold, um, let's, we can continue talking, you know, while we eating, and I mean, we talked, and we talked, and we talked, and some of the kids, I mean, kids were gone, it was still, kid, it was 9.30, we were still there, kids talking, and so we met, you know, our leaders, we met afterwards, and we were like, whoa, 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 like, we cannot just graze over this topic right here. So long story short, that was in October. We, we decided, look, we're going to talk about this as long as we have to. We cannot just do business as usual. That was in October. In May, we were still talking about forgiveness. And it went on into the summer, like we letting kids go. It was still a group of kids that still wanted to get together and let's talk about this thing, man. And so, and so that's how it started. It started as a response to how deep this thing was for youth. And what we discovered over that school year was that, that the kids weren't really, the youth weren't really struggling with forgiving. They were really struggling with all the misconceptions about forgiveness. They didn't understand. And so what we wanted to put them on to was the connection between where they are in their life and where they want to be in their life. So we started talking about their dreams. And, we, and, and so we started showing them like, hey, do you know somebody who had a dream? Who's skilled, talented, and for, for some reason, they in and out of relationships, can't keep a job, mad all the time, always fighting with somebody, just for whatever reason, they can't, can't get it together. They, you know, all of this stuff. And they started actually identifying like, yeah, I do know people who dream just like I do and still talking about their dreams, but ain't doing nothing. As a matter of fact, they, they just in and out of relationships and always doing this and always doing that and can't never really seem to get anywhere. And we started to show them from a clinical perspective. So we didn't just, you know, shoot from the hip and we didn't just give them Bible stories. We got together as a team of adults and we researched from a clinical perspective what is it what are the effects of bitterness that our kids need to understand our youth need to understand 
So we showed them the health, you know, blood pressure, diabetes, direct connection to kidney failure. Like bitterness will kill you. And we were showing them the direct connection to, um, and I'm sitting on my porch, it's so beautiful out here. Um, we showed them the direct connection to like education. We would show them like, okay, so that dude that's blowing up, like you've been in the class, one teacher made you mad, you walked away from that. Another teacher made you mad, you walked away from that. Another teacher made you mad, you walked away from that. You, another teacher made you mad and you blew up. Why? It's because that compiled, of the compiled offenses and then it all comes out on one person, right? And so we started connect like, yeah, they, so they started seeing like, okay, so this could mess you up in your education. Like, you you always mad and you can't keep a job or you now your education messed up. You don't go to college, you drop out of college or whatever. You don't never develop the habits you need because you're mad, right? Or you, you know, and so we started showing them how educationally, physiologically, relationally, financially is to your advantage to learn how to forgive and to let that stuff go. So that's what made the conversation so long because we had to connect the dots because really at the end of the day, we want our youth to grow up to be viable citizens. That's living, living, killing it, living a life, doing great, okay? So we really want them to be well overall. And so we had to take the time and do the research and, and, and flesh it all the way out and let them ask the hard question and let them be mad. Like, let them be mad. We had a lot, like, mad he got into. Sometimes, man, it was just like, we just sit back and listen. Just let them, let them get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Sometimes nobody ever gives them permission to just get it out, to be mad, to be angry. Like, it ain't even right for you to be angry. You know, I'm like, you ought to be angry if that happened. Everybody should be mad if that happened. Right? All right, so I know I'm going on, but let me, let me just, so that's where it started. And so from there, they actually... Well, like, man, I need to take this to my friends. I need to take it to my family. And that's what we started to see. We started to see them bring their friends. We started to see family members, stepmom, stepping in the door saying, hey, you know, you talk to him about, he telling you about this, but did he talk to you about this? You know, <laughs> like, no. And like, hey, by the way, can, can, you know, I need some, you know what I'm saying? So, so it just, it just, kind of snowballed into something that we really, at the time, we weren't even prepared for it. And so, you know, and so, you know, long story short, we go to the city, we go to the police department, we go to Friends, of Project Sun, and Harbor House, and all of these different people, and they was like, yeah, we'll, we'll help, we'll help, we'll help support these kids if they wanna, if they wanna take it to their friends, they wanna take it to the families, and, and then at the end of the day, they said, we should take this to the streets, then we'll support them. So the reason, a big reason why I'm in it is because I had a connection with them, but I also had the experience to help develop them as leaders of an initiative, you know, to take some ownership in their community. And that's what they're doing. And that's what you're supporting, which I'm so thankful for. When, you, when you're taking that sign, you're saying to them, I support y'all movement, but I do understand when you have concerns about like what this is, right? So that's where it started. So in short, what it is, is it's a movement to reduce or prevent violence through the act of forgiveness. And we have seen that real. I mean, we have one kid known as hands, you know, always fight, fight, fight. That stopped. It stopped. Right. So first is these. But, you know, out of high school, it's. It's coming out of the end of a gun, you know. So, so that that's what it that's what it is is to prevent or reduce violence through the act of forgiveness. Okay, so let's talk about what is not, and I'm gonna get out your way. Forgiveness is not turning a blind eye toward injustice. Forgiveness is not excusing the offender. Like. Some of the stuff we like that that the, these youth were thinking forgiveness was, we were like, oh my god, see why you don't want to forgive. That's absurd. Like forgiveness is is not necessarily reconciling to some stupid head person that's done something. You know what I'm saying? 
So, uh, yeah, it, you know, some of the stuff that, and I'm not going to go through the whole, that's why we came up with the whole 10 myths about forgiveness. That was actually what we used to help them understand, like, no, 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 it is not, no, you better believe you ain't supposed to feel warm and fuzzy around some dude that won't even acknowledge that they did you wrong. You're supposed to feel good? No, you should be angry. But you just can't use that angry energy to hurt people or hurt yourself. You got to learn what to do with that. So, so that's, you know, that's the short of it. Um, I was going to try my, try my best to keep this under 10 minutes. But, but that's, that's what it is. You know, it's, it's young people understanding the connection between forgiveness and a healthy future, healthy lifestyle. And and understanding that, man, I had so many things mixed up about what forgiveness is. I'm, and I had people tell me, I'm so glad you told me that because because I had somebody telling me that, well, yeah, if you if you can't find it in your heart, you know, and I'm a pastor. A lot of this stuff, I ain't even lie to you. It come out of the church. It come across pulpits. If you can't find it in your heart to give that person a hug. I know. I'm like, no, some of the people, you should never want to go near them again in your life and keep your kids away from them. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I really want to make clear, because I know that that's probably where the biggest concern comes in is some of this fluffy, erroneous teaching about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness actually can be pretty confrontational. OK. So um, forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean you ain't going to call the cops, right? Forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean you won't testify in court. That's not forgiveness. That's foolishness. That's letting crime arise. It's letting criminals go. That's not what forgiveness is. See? And so when they start getting that, it's like, and I mean, we talk about it and we go through scenario after scenario after scenario after scenario. What if, what, what, what if, what, what if, what, what if? And we talk about it. This is how you deal with that. And the more we talked about it, the more liberated those youth became. And they, it's just like, okay, I feel so much better about the phrase, can't get key forgives now. I, yeah, let's do it. You know, they actually came up with the phrase. So, um, so there you have it. If you have some questions, hit me up. You know, I am, you know, I, I feel like I got a pretty thick skin. Um, I love people who think critically about things. So any kind of feedback, I, I do not take offense um, to this kind of stuff. That's why I'm not, I'm not mad. Like I, I saw some stuff, I'm like, oh, nah, that's not what it is. So, but you know, how can people know what it is if you don't tell them what it is? So that's why I'm doing this video, all right? So, hey, um, as these conversations continue throughout the community, um, I hope you would now become an advocate. Um, or if you, let, let's start with before an advocate, if you still are like, nah, you know, I think, and you got some questions and you got some concerns, please just let me know what they are. All right. And, and we, can, we can talk it out. I love talking about it. Um, and then after that, if you would become an advocate, um, just get a sign. You can order a sign through the, through the link that's down in the comments. You can order a sign. And every time, every time the kids see a sign out, they're encouraged, they're inspired. And, uh, so, so just know that that's when you, when you see that 25 to 30 students out there, high school age kids, and these are high school students from throughout the County too. Um, loving on Kankakee. So every time you see that, just just know that you're doing you're doing their hearts some good as well. All right. So God bless you. Talk to you later. Peace.